For Chef Mark Quinotas, food is an obsession. The James Beard nominee lives and breathes his craft, making a name for himself in New Mexico and beyond. We're excited to have him here tonight to talk about his nomination, how he began, and what the future holds in his career. So, Mark, thank you for taking the opportunity to talk with us today. I really appreciate it. And congratulations on the nomination. How does it feel to be nominated for a James Beard Award? Well, thank you for being here. It's an honor and a privilege to be able to speak with you today, so I really appreciate that. Thanks. Um, being nominated for a James Beard Award, it's, uh, it's life-changing. You know, it's, uh, it's almost surreal. I can imagine. You know, uh, you grow up, you know, um, as a young you know, boy wanting to be a chef and you start you know, figuring out how the industry works and, you know, you, you, you figure out who the James Beard Foundation is and mm -hmm. you go, wow, it's like, it's like the Academy Awards for, for chefs. And, you know, it always just seems like so far out of reach, like, well, that, well, that'll never happen, but I'm going to keep cooking good food. And, you know, so for it to happen, um, it's like one of those, like, I got to pitch myself moments because it, you know, it doesn't seem real. Um, but it's real exciting. Yes, yes, I can imagine. So let's talk about how this journey began. Where did your love of food begin, that this became a passion and a career? Well, uh, my journey for food began when I was a young boy. You know, I grew up in the South Bronx in New York City uh, in Hunts Point, a uh, single mother. And, um, you know, she was always cooking in the kitchen. Her and my grandma always had food going, delicious food, right? Mm -hmm. So being Puerto Rican, Dominican by culture, watching my mom and grandma always throwing down, you know, rice and beans and, you yeah. know, uh, whether it be fried pork chops or uh, roasted pork or, you know, chicken. This is making me hungry. <laughs> I mean, you know, tostones and plantains, bright flavors, and they were always making the marinades. You could smell it. Yeah. So I was always in the kitchen being nosy, you know, wanting, <laughs> it, wanting to know how I went down. And I remember... My mom taught me how to, how to marinate turkey wings. I was probably like eight years old. I learned how to make a mojo marinade, and uh, I roasted them in the oven. And ever since then, like, I, you know, I, in my mind, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm going to put that marinade on this, or I'm going to add this to the marinade, and I'm going to cook that, <laughs> you know, and then I learned how to make rice and beans real young. Mm -hmm. um, so honestly, like, not just to be cliche, like, I've been – since I was a young boy, this is all I've ever wanted to do was cook. I didn't have like any glorious kitchen positions. You know, I didn't work for like any, like those famous French chefs. No, like I was a pot washer. And my first real kitchen job was on one Wall Street in the Bank of New York headquarters wow. in, in the basement. You know, that turned into like a banquet prep cook, a line cook. After that, I moved to Scottsdale, Arizona, where I attended Le Cordon Bleu of Culinary Arts class of 2005. Had a great job out there on the Eagle Mountain Resort. And then I came back to New Mexico uh, in 2007, believe it or not. And I've been cooking in New Mexico, you know, for the last going on 17 years. And I tell people the truth. I go, look, you know, I might be from New York, um, but New Mexico has made me the chef that I am today. You know, it's given me so much inspiration and it's taking me in and my family in. So, th you know, this, this is home. I honestly was wondering where, you know, leaving from... New York and working in Manhattan and being here, just how that elevates your food or where, really where it starts molding. Like, how did you essentially craft your style of cooking? I, that's a great question, you know, and, and I'll be honest, like it's New Mexico. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, New York, I think, you know, gave me, I would say the courage and like the, the, the thick skin to be able to, like any situation that comes at me, I feel like prepared to handle it. But when I came here, you know, I became an executive chef in New Mexico. Yeah. You know, so um, by educating myself further on, you know, New Mexican ancestors, the spirituality behind this beautiful state, you know, factoring in that we're high, high desert, you know, the, what's available out here is, is, is the most unique, incredible bounty of animals, you know, the chiles, right? Yeah. You know, uh, uh, red chile, green chile, um, the most amazing herbs and, and fruits and vegetables come right out of the ground in New Mexico. We're very uniquely situated on the map. So if you go to our kitchen, we, we cook on cast iron, yep. little, little kettles. Um, our food is very flavor forward. Um, it's wild game heavy. It's local vegetable and fruit heavy. Um, so it's just modern New Mexican ranch cuisine. So all we're doing here is telling the story 
of New Mexican ancestors. You have your, your French training. You've, you've worked in New York. You have the New Mexico love under your belt. When you have that day that you just want to lift yourself up, the day may have been hard and you want to lift yourself up. What's that one dish that you go to? That you oh, go to? my word. Okay. Um, just a, and, and on, on a day off type of thing, day I wake up. Oh, yeah. So I'll tell you, it's uh, arroco maí. It's uh, Spanish rice and corn mm -hmm. with sausages um, and fried chicken wings. Puerto wow. Rican, Puerto Rican style. So mm -hmm. we, we don't flour them. We get garlic, oregano, uh, achote, olive oil, vinegar, a few other things. And we, and we make this great oh, we do a little mojo marinade. And we soak the wings in that. Mm. And I fry it in corn oil. Pollo frito. Uh, <laughs> With a roco maíz, so Spanish rice and corn, and fried chicken wings, with just an with iceberg iceberg lettuce and a garlic vinaigrette. So, what is it about that dish that that brings so much love? That's the dish that my mom, you know, uh, would always make for me, you know, um, and like it was very, it was like my favorite meal. It's 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 just a great dish that is delicious. Uh, it comforts my soul, um, and that that that's a dish that, believe it or not, like I, I've never really put on the on the menu. That's just for like, you know, when I'm away, like that's that one that I know, like that's going to always hit the spot because like I only <laughs> really see it, you know, when I'm in need of that comfort. Through this journey so far, what has been the greatest lesson you learned in being a chef and following this career? The greatest lesson that I've learned, uh, you know, being on this journey as a chef has been, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. Um, perhaps uh, more often than you'd like. You know, uh, psychologically, emotionally, you know, and if you're going to take a deep dive into this industry, um, you know, uh, be aware of your behaviors, you know, outside of the kitchen, you know, how you start your day. Yeah. Um, because it takes a toll, you know, whether it be getting a James Beard nomination or being told that, you know, this Buffalo dish sucks, you know, every day your, your brain receives these really high highs and low lows, right? you're told multiple times a day how great something is. And you're also told how bad something is. Yeah. And subliminally that, that can begin to compound on you and affect your mental health. Um, so I think being aware of that um, is, is critical. You know, the biggest lesson above any recipe that I can, that I can use as a, just a, a device to teach or mentor is let, let's talk about what really matters. Cause the cooking is the easy part. You have dreams about reading about yourself in a magazine or competing on a, on a national stage or something like that. That's wonderful. But like, you, you have to be resilient. You have to have gone through a lot yeah. um, that can really cripple a lot of people. The best way to put yourself in a position to handle those opportunities is really, again, it's, you know, you have to properly hydrate yourself. You have to constantly educate yourself. And, and that's the lesson that I've learned day in and day out is that how I treat my body, how I treat my mind will have a lot to do with what I put on the plate and how that, and how that's received ultimately by the guest. Well, Mark, congratulations. You have an amazing craft for this art. And so it's, you know, it's being recognized and it's not surprising. We've loved it here in New Mexico for years. So I'm glad that people are getting to see that on a national forum. You continue to represent New Mexico um, so well and, and love it so much. So I appreciate that and congratulations. Thank you so much. God bless you. Same to you. We'll be back.